Hey, good afternoon, guys. It's Juan Grimaldo here with Wendy Patton. She's back, and I'm super excited because today we're going to talk about subject twos. Hi, Wendy. Hi. Thank you for coming. Hey, yeah, thank you. Um, part two. We'll call it part two. You Let's know. do it. Let's do it. Um, this will be exciting. So we, we were just talking, um, Juan, about sub twos and what they are. But first, let me define what a subject two is. So a subject two is when you get the title to a property, someone deeds you their home. Okay. But it's subject to the underlying mortgage. So, you know, let's say Juan owns a home. He has a mortgage. And he wants to sell it. And I like his mortgage terms. I just say, Juan, sign this deed, and I'll give you whatever I'm going to give him. Uh, it might be money out. It might not be. It might be nothing out because maybe might he be just, just wants to get rid of it. Mm. Um, it just kind of, he, sometimes he'll pay me, okay? If he owes too much, then he might pay me to get rid of it off his back, okay? Especially when times are tough. Interesting. Okay. Uh, now, so why are subject twos so important right now? Because there are many years worth of mortgages that were two and three percent mm. okay many that's years. why it's key many years right so anybody who has a house that they have one of those mortgages on and they don't need to cash out that mortgage or um, are willing to just leave it be you can take it so here's the thing right you so you deed me the house now i own it now if you have a lot of equity which you might you may need it all out or you may only need a portion of it out. That's all negotiable. Every real estate transaction and real estate investing is negotiable. So Juan and I are going to decide what does he need out or what doesn't he. And I'm, I'm going to find that out from questions. If he already bought his new home and he didn't sell the old one, I know he might want his cash out, but he might not need it out. So two mm. different things, right? Looking at that. And if you if you want more details, I do have that book. It's on Amazon. What is it called? Um, it's Investing in Real Estate with Lease Options and Subject Twos. Now, I published it in 2005, and I just republished it last year again awesome. with all the new updated stuff because, you know, not the newspaper anymore. It's <laughs> online, you know, that kind of thing. Right. But um, so it's been updated. So check it out. Um, make sure it's got that little red thing on this. There's a bonus thing in there. Anyway, um, it'll, it'll describe a lot more and a lot of how to really calculate these things and how to negotiate and scripts to talk to sellers and stuff like that. Okay. And lease options as well. So when you are... Well, Here's the biggest issue that people are concerned with with doing a subject two is that they feel that the note or the mortgage could be called due. Mm. And it could be. It is a possibility. It's, a possibility. it's rare, but it's possible. And if you follow a few simple steps, it can make it easier. Okay. Okay? So um, in, a, in a nutshell, um, first of all, never, ever, ever commit mortgage fraud. It's a felony, um, and you never want to lie to the mortgage company. So I never tell... Um, a lie. I just don't always tell the whole truth. <laughs> Got it? That's different. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, especially being a licensed uh, broker um, and title agent and builder, I would lose all my licenses mm. if I had any kind of fraud like with that. Right. So what I would typically do is say, okay, I work with Juan. He wants to get rid of this house. Um, and, uh, and it's got a great mortgage on it. Maybe it's 3% great payment. Um, Half of what it is right now, right? Or whatever. So it's a big deal. Definitely. I mean, it's a really big deal. Um, and, I, and then I want to tell you one more thing. Don't let me forget to tell you. This is really important thing about subject twos. And I wish I had a chart or something, but I'm going to tell you guys a little thing to look up because it makes it even more valuable. Can we share okay. the chart? Yeah. Can I give it to you later? Yeah. And then yeah, we'll yeah. put it here. We'll put a link it. so you guys can okay. download it. I, I'll, I'll explain it later. So I'm negotiating with Juan. Here's the thing. I'm going to have a letter drafted. That basically says Juan is moving his property to an LLC. But he's going to sign it. I'm going to draft it for him. Hi, Bank of America or whatever. Um, I, Juan Grimaldo, am moving my property into 123XYZ Street LLC or whatever it is. Okay. That's true. Okay. He didn't say his LLC. He said into <laughs> an LLC. An LLC. <laughs> Got it? Go. Very key. Okay. That's <laughs> right. Key right there. Um, and then um, I will update my insurance and just wanted to make sure everyone knew. Blah, blah, blah. Whatever. Okay. I have the words in my book. Whatever. Okay. And then you sign it. So you mail that into the mortgage company. Okay. So they have notice now. Now, that's one reason. And it's not bad to, it's not even bad to do it certified, but I, 
I don't want to make it look too weird or official <laughs> or something. You know, so I just don't want to give them too many clues. Them. But I'll I'll document and I'll document that I um, that's when I when I sent it in, okay, and that they did nothing with you, okay. So then we're getting ready to close. Um, a couple other things have to happen. Juan gives me access to his mortgage, okay, meaning as a full authorized you person should. on your mortgage information. So I can call the bank. I can talk to them about is everything on time, is it current, here's where the the, the, the um, new LLC mailing address will be. Oh, and that could be in that letter too. And the address for my for the LLC will be blah, 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 blah. Okay? Perfect. Okay. So is, is it pretty easy to have them give you permission to have access no, to? No, there's no permission. I'm just telling them we're moving in. <laughs> okay. There's no, they'll no, never I'm, I'm asking about for, for oh, the, yes. me oh, and yeah, my yeah, mortgage yeah, yeah, company. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, easy peasy. So basically, you're going to, um, whatever your, now, there's some basic forms you can have filled out that you give to them, like a limited power of attorney and stuff like that. But but it's easier if Juan just calls Bank of America, for instance, and says, what do I need to do to make, you an make my user. friend or whatever <coughs> an authorized user on my account? Or, or not user, but uh, authorized to talk to you about my mortgage. Gotcha. Okay. And they'll give you the form. And then you fill it out and you get it to them. I'll keep a copy just so I have a copy from for my records to prove later if they say, well, you're not authorized to talk to us, whatever. Because you want to talk to them before, this is before closing, okay? So now before closing, I'm checking with the lender to make sure he's current or whatever he told me. If he's behind two payments, maybe that's one thing I'm doing for him. Maybe he's behind two payments. He doesn't want to lose it, it in foreclosure. I'd be catching it up at closing. Not before closing. Oh, yeah. At closing. The title that's company important. does this for me. Yep. Okay. So when you do these things, for example, when you are starting the process, um, if there's no difference, I mean, whatever you agree to, that's basically it. That's right. And so, the payments are made through title directly nope. to the bank? or nope, do you make nope, the nope. Pay- I make the payments. Okay. I have them come right out of my checking account or whatever, okay? So it's you're um, basically the not the new owner, and you're sending that payment yep. straight in with yep, your Yep, I'm LLC, sending it in just like check. normal. And, and I have... Because I'm authorized to do everything mm. on behalf, and there's like wording gotcha. in my book that can kind of help you with this. But it tells like everything that you need access to. Like I need to know the balance. I need to be able to change the address. I need to be able to, you know, uh, find out the status of the mortgage. I need to be able to ask for a payoff request. All of those things. Wow. Okay. So when that, so this is all happening prior to closing. Then at the closing table, any shortage gets mailed or wired. Okay. Now, your title company, if they don't do it, you need a different title company or you need to explain to them what's really going on because they may not understand it. Gotcha. Okay. Or I can Yeah, because that, that's one of the, I, I got some pushback okay. when I was talking about those. So you, you, it is totally legit for them, but some title companies don't like it because they feel like, well, there's this mortgage out there and you don't have permission. Well, it's an exception to the title policy. So they're only insuring everything else. I don't care about the mortgage on here. I just want you to insure the policy, everything else on this property except that mortgage. Okay, so that's what the policy will mm. will come to you with. So then they do all the closing. They wire the money if there's shortage, blah, blah, blah. But you also, here's the other big step that people miss, and this is how they sometimes have a problem with the bank. Once you change the, once you, you know, you, you notify them you're going to change it. Right. Well, at the closing is when you actually really change it, when it gets deeded from Joe Blow or Juan to the LLC, um, and then it gets recorded, that insurance has to match that. So he's gonna mm. Juan's gonna cancel his insurance because he can't just change the ownership of the insurance policy. It can't be changed like that. So he's canceling that one. I'm creating a new one with the LLC. With the LLC, but here's the, where the key is: you've got to name Juan as additional insured. Mm. They need to be able to see that Juan's name I'm oh, still matches that, that mortgage, even though additional insured doesn't give him any rights to any money if it was burned down. It only helps him if someone slips and falls. It's a liability insurance for him, right? So he's additional insured, so the bank can match that, um, and then your new address, and then you na- need to name the mortgage company exactly like one did before on there as the mortgage holder. Then they get this new mortgage policy. They've already been kind of notified of this uh, LLC thing, and now they see this. Um, that is works like ninety nine point nine nine percent of the time. So in essence, let's say let's you got to do it all right. You know? Right. Let's say there is a claim. You're going to be the one receiving yeah, yeah, that because your owner. address, and it might owner. be the name. Got it. Okay. Only the owner gets paid, like if there's a claim or if there's a fire or anything like that. Yeah. See, this is where we talk about learning, guys. This is this is key, and, and it's so simple. Like, I honestly have heard of subject twos. Yeah. I'm not going to say I knew about them because I don't want to say no, because I don't. And, yeah. and yeah. you just explain it in a way that I it makes total sense. And why aren't we doing any more of these? 
So this is what's really cool. You are being in the real estate world, especially as an uh, agent who gets a lot of volume. You guys have a lot going on. You are going to run across sellers that have these situations. Yes. They have great mortgages. Maybe they don't have a lot of equity. Or even if they do have some equity, they may not need it all. Right. It's all negotiable. You know, maybe you have $100,000 of equity and I give you twenty grand, um, and the other eighty just sits there until I sell it or sits there at a small percentage. Or, you know, it's all Or they can even finance it. There's so many ways you can put deals together, right? And let's say they have a $80,000 equity and they don't want to get the full amount. You can have them do a note on that second, maybe be a second lien. Is that possible could, or not? I mean, I've never asked anyone to do that. I give them a note. Oh, yeah, I give them a note. Right. Yes, from my LLC to Juan would be a second mortgage on there. Yes, you could do that. Yeah. Yes, awesome. yes, yes, yes. That way he's protected. That way if I got hit by a bus tomorrow and that house gets sold, his interest is... You get that insured. portion. Yes. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Sorry, I misunderstood that. No, no, But it's really don't. important that all those little steps happen in there. But here's the thing. I want to talk about those amortization schedules. <laughs> um, so when you... And this is... Okay, guys, I've been investing almost 40 years, right? Um, and I just found this out. When I redid my book and I did a presentation, this was like last year. Okay, I did a presentation to my real estate investors group. And as I was putting together the amortization charts to show 2%, 3%, 5%, 9% interest, I found the weirdest thing. I never knew this. And very few investors know this. Okay. Very few. I guarantee you this, very few. But it's so key. So when you look at a two, like a 2.5% amortization schedule, which there's a ton of those out there compared to like a 7 or a ten, even a 10, okay? Um, mm -hmm. I know where you're going. You do? Yes. Tell me. No, keep going. Oh, my. The difference is astronomical. But here's the thing. I always thought that the mortgage payment, of course, it's going to be higher with a higher rate, right? Higher rate, a higher payment. Of course it is. But what I didn't know is that the amortization schedule would actually be different on the principal paid. So when you have a 2.5% mortgage, more goes toward the principal every month in the beginning years than a 7 or 10%. Way more. Like 50% almost from day one, if you have a low interest rate mortgage, goes toward the principal. Interesting. Whereas when you, not, I'm not just talking percentage-wise, I'm talking dollars too. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you this chart where I show the differences um, of each one. And it is so incredible. It was, I, I thought, oh, something's wrong. They kept looking at me. It's not possible. It's a 30-year mortgage. I mean, if I'm mortgaging 175, whether it's 2 or 7%, the amount going toward the principal each month should be exactly the same. Mm -hmm. It's not. There's some kind of mathematical weird phenomenon with amortization schedules where it's reversed. So years ago, when I first bought my first home at 10%, everyone said, you don't start paying on the principal till much later. It's all front and loaded. That's true. Except when you get to 2.5%, 3%. Really? So you're, not only is your cash flow better because that payment is so much lower, so that's number one. Two is that the amount you are paying, way more of wow. it goes toward the principal than on a high interest rate loan. And it is bizarre. Not just, not, yeah, it, it's, something's weird. It's the opposite. So when you have 2.5%, it's front loaded with principal and back loaded with interest. Really? That I didn't know. So... And, no and, one does. Hardly. And what do they say uh, about the uh, Einstein said this about the the compound interest, mm. Mm. the eighth wonder of the world. But it works when you're renting properties; it, it, it works backwards. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're paying it, huh? Mm -hmm. It's crazy. So that what what that does for you is not only does it give you more cash flow with those. That's why I said go after those. This is big time, mm. guys. Big time. Okay, but remember, I'm winding down my inventory. I'm doing more lending and investing in syndications and stuff like that than I am buying and flipping properties anymore. Although I do some, but not a ton, right? Right. Um, but with that interest, that was that would be exactly what I'd go after right now. I would go after those big time, okay. any of those. Any of those I could get. Because let's say you're making $500 a month cash flow if it's a lower interest rate than if it is higher interest rate, which is very possible, 500 to 1,000 probably on market here, right? Yep. Big difference, a big difference. So that that alone is huge. It's but huge. then the amount that you are paying, more of it is going towards buying down that, building the equity than on a higher rate too. Much more. I, I can't wait till you see those. I, I can't even explain it. It's the bizarrest thing. And I think some people even look at it and they go, oh, I didn't, you know. But when you start to know amortization schedules, like 
you know, we always look at like, what is it? But usually you just look at like, okay, I'm going to pay 7%. This is what it is. But what you don't usually look at is I'm going to compare 7% the amount. to 5 and look at every month what, how much is going to each one. I thought it was the same. Awareness is everything, right? That, <gasps> it's huge. Oh, how did I not know that? And again, 40 years into the business. I wrote a book business. in 2005 on that. Right? Mm-hmm. We got to get the book. What's the name of the book again? Investing in Real Estate with Lease Options and Subject Tears. Okay, by Wendy. Patton. All right, let's go. Thank you again, Wendy, for your time. Oh, you this it. is great. This is amazing information, guys. Thank you. Tune in for more. We're going to have her back again here soon. So don't miss it. Share it, please. All right. Have a good day. Bye.